on this computer. Hi everyone, this is Maura Whittington from the Metuchen Public Library and we're here tonight or this evening with Iris and Edgar from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield. They're going to give a presentation today on how to eat healthy on a budget. So I'm going to turn it over to Iris. Hi, thank you, Maura. Um, so my name is Iris Novas Cooney. I am a community health education manager for Horizon Blue Cross and Blue Shields. Um, with me today is my colleague, Edgar. I'm gonna turn it over to Edgar so he can talk a little bit about Medicaid and then he'll turn it back to me. Edgar. Thank you, Iris. Hi guys, my name is Edgar Osorio. I'm a community health rep for Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield in New Jersey. Basically what that means, I'm a customer service rep, but on the field. Uh, part of what I do a lot is I help people uh, learn a little bit more about Medicaid specifically, and also being able to help them enroll into Medicaid. Uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or if uh, you're not, you're kind of unsure about, about insurance and need to uh, need a little bit more information, then I would be the expert to talk to. Um, after this whole presentation, I'll leave my contact information. We can definitely have a chit chat and see what your situation is and how could what we could do to help you guys out. Uh, aside from an insurance expert, I'm here within the community, so I'm fully connected with a lot of uh, resources and organizations that are here to help um, everyone in, within their community and even for those who are uh, far away from your specific community. Um, but again, I like to leave it at that. Um, I'll leave my contact information in the chat box, but for now, I'll pass it over back to Iris. Thanks, Edgar. So um, before we get started today, we're going to talk primarily about nutrition. And since the conversation is around nutrition, many folks um, since the pandemic have been struggling with food insecurity issues. Um, either they don't have enough money to get through the week um, without purchasing more food, or the food that they do buy just isn't enough. Um, or suffice and they have no money to go purchase more. Um, if you or your family or anyone that you know is struggling with food insecurity, um, please let us know. I'm happy to share uh, privately a list of local food pantries that can provide um, food uh, and necessities to get you through the week. Um, no one should be going hungry and um, especially children. So if um, anyone uh, that you know, or if you or your family is um, food insecure, please uh, let Maura know. Maura will then in turn um, share that information with me and I will get you a list of local food pantries um, that you have access to. So before we get to the nutrition piece, um, we <clears throat> are really striving for folks to understand that during the pandemic, there's certain things that we have to consider. And I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. Um, can you see my screen, Edgar? I can still see you on the side panel. Okay, great. Okay, great. So um, during the pandemic, our behaviors really matter. Um, right now is the flu season and um, we really need to be mindful that it's not just um, that we are at risk for COVID-19 or the coronavirus, but we are also, um, this is right now the flu season, so it is really critically important to keep yourself healthy by being mindful of your habits, making sure that you are washing your hands frequently and not touching um, your face. And when you do touch your face, make sure that you are washing your hands um, before you touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth um, to, to reduce the risk of transmission of viruses and flu. Simple habits like coughing, uh, uh, covering your cough is vitally important and frequent hand washing for at least 20 seconds with um, warm water and soap. Um, making sure also that you are wiping down surfaces and being mindful of what you touch and um, frequent hand washing really does reduce the risk of contracting respiratory illnesses, especially now that the uh, winter months are upon us. 
Um, when you are outside, please um, use a face covering to cover your nose and your mouth and keep social distance at least six feet from individuals. Um, be mindful of this practice as it is important to reduce the risk of unnecessary exposure to COVID-19 or if you are what's called an asymptomatic carrier, meaning that you are carrying the virus, but you are not showing any symptoms of the virus. Virus, um, that you are not actively infecting others. So the um, it's important to use a face mask when you are outside of your home. Like if you're going out for a walk, um, you know, keep the face mask, you know, somewhere in your face. If there's no one around you, like if you're in a park and there's no one around you, you can pull it down. But if there are people walking past you constantly, um, or if you're in, an, especially in an enclosed space, like, um, like a store like Target or Walmart, um, make sure that you are covering your nose and your mouth with a face covering. Before you use, um, put on your face covering because it's going so close proximity to your face, make sure that you're using um, clean hands. So wash your hands or hand sanitize to ensure that you are not um, unnecessarily putting other bacteria that's resting on your hands back in your face, um, increasing your risk. So this um, just recently came out from the CDC and um, it's critically important that if you have been informed that someone within your circle um, has tested positive and uh, they recommend that you get tested, even though you test negative, you still have to quarantine for the full 14 days. So if somebody in close proximity, so for example, if somebody in your household tests positive and you go get tested and you're negative, um, that still means that you have to quarantine um, for 14 days because you could actively be carrying the virus and infect others unknowingly. So um, please keep that in mind and um, share this you know, with your parents and your loved ones um, that if anyone in the household has tested positive, even though those individuals that test negative, they still have to quarantine for 14 days, meaning they stay in the home right, away from other people, and you only go out when it's absolutely necessary. Okay, so I am going to start presenting my PowerPoint. Do, are there any questions so far? No, but Iris, I wanted to say that's a very good point. I think a lot of people think once they test negative that they can just go out and it's, it's not yeah. that way, and that's why it's yeah. spreading. As quickly yep. as it is now, it gives them that false sense of security. Yeah. That I tested negative. I know that we had a scare. And when we spoke to the doctor, they were like, yes, if you go for that test, you're supposed to quarantine. Um, and a lot or of 14 people, days. Yep. Yeah. A lot of people do not do that. They get the test, they get the negative, they go back to work. They don't realize that they're carrying. And I, I don't think enough people know that they're supposed to quarantine for the 14 days. For the 14 days, even though they've tested negative. It's, it's um, so the, the reason for that is that sometimes um, what's called a viral load, meaning if you've been exposed, right, and your body is currently infected, that initial, like, um, so from the time that you get informed that somebody in close proximity tests positive, and then you go get tested, the viral load may be really low, meaning the amount of um, active virus in your system may be too low for the test to pick it up, right? Um, so it, it's always good to get tested initially, find out if, if you're um, exposed, but also follow up within like a week and a half, maybe another seven to 10 days to get an, a follow-up test to make sure that you're still negative, right? And during this time, you're still quarantining, meaning you are not actively, you know, going out or, you know, having gatherings, like hooking up with friends or seeing people, um, especially if they're high risk. Um, so I'm sorry about that. It's so okay. it's it's critically important to understand that sometimes the viral load takes a good you know for, there have been cases where um, they tested negative you know the first day the seventh day and the fourteenth day is when they actually test positive so that doesn't mean that the virus is not like you're not contagious that's you're probably the most contagious 
right? Um, so when you're not showing symptoms. So um, it's really important. Uh, I'm glad that you brought that up so, so that people have an understanding that sometimes the viral load is too low um, for the test to, to actually capture it. It's almost like that, you know, the strep test, when you get that quick strep test and then they send it out to the lab for culture, right? And they call you back in like a day or two and say, yeah, you need to start your antibiotics because you do have strep, right? But the first test came up negative. Similar, not the same. Similar. Similar. I know there is a thing being a little bit of positive and still testing negative. Exactly. <laughs> you just have to wait for exactly. it to grow. <laughs> exactly. I'll let you get yeah. on with your presentation, but thank you for thank bringing you. up that point. Of course. Of course. So today we're going to talk about um, eating healthy on a budget. Um, during the, uh, these days, we really have to be mindful of our spending, especially with folks struggling with work um, and high unemployment. But even if um, the circumstances, you know, were fine, um, you know, food waste is a real thing. It really does impact negatively on our planet. Um, and we shouldn't waste food. We should consume the food uh, or purchase the food that we're going to consume and be mindful of the food that we're putting into our bodies because really our food is our first medicine, right? So um, it is important to uh, create behaviors around nutrition that are healthy for you, um, but that, that's, that doesn't mean that you can never like enjoy those things that aren't so healthy for you, right? Like ice cream or pizza or a burger. Um, but we have to balance it out um, because people normally have a relationship with food, right? They either bring you... Um, you, you tend to use all your senses with your favorite meals that you consume. You, you um, consume it when, when you're gathered with loved ones um, or with friends. Uh, so it, it's always a, a good thing to develop these healthy relationship with food and have an understanding that balance is the key. So um, has anyone ever seen, you can put it in the chat box for me. Has anyone ever seen the My Plate Method? Um, I could just let me know uh, if anyone has ever seen that um, if there's a response. Um, so the my plate method replaces the, um, I'm sorry? I have one person who, who agreed to it. Oh, okay, great. Um, so the my plate method, it, it used to be the food pyramid, right? Years ago, probably 30, 40 years ago, um, the food pyramid. Uh, and it switched over to the my plate method because one, it's something that you can use uh, or a method that you can teach globally, right? Because most people around the world eat off of a plate, okay? Um, two, if you look at the first thing that pops out from the my plate is the, the variety of color, right? So we're looking at the different colors, right? Within the category of grains, protein, fruits, and vegetables. And on the side here is dairy. Now, when you're younger, right, it's really important to have a certain amount of dairy in your diet um, because your brain is still developing, right? And um, there's certain, certain fats within milk that are um, great for brain development. However, as you get older, um, it, the need shifts, right? So we really, as we get older, we need more um, calcium and vitamin D, right? And um, milk today is fortified, meaning they add extra vitamins um, in order to ensure that we're getting the necessary vitamins in our system and in our diet. But it's really not a vital component. This is why it's over here on the side. Um, the four portions, if you look closely, half of your plate should always be made up of fruits and vegetables. A quarter, which is about the size of your fist, should be grains and a quarter should be proteins, right? Now, um, we're gonna go through all the different categories, right? So grains are uh, like what kinds of gra grains are like rice or pasta or breads, right? But not all of them are created equal, right? There's certain grains that are healthier than others, right? Um, other types of grains uh, or the grains that are most healthy are the whole grains, right? So the closest thing to the original grain is always better. So when you look at the packaging of like a loaf of bread or um, uh, rice or pasta, always look for the word whole grain um, 
in the writing because that means that the integrity of the grain is still within the component of whatever you're consuming. Grains are super good for your gut health. Um, they tend to um, have a lot of fiber and clean out the system. Um, they also have a lot of minerals and vitamins in them that are really healthy for your general health, right? Your body absorbs it, it uses that um, as, for energy. Um, and also whole grains keep you fuller longer because it takes the body a little bit longer to break it down, okay? So um, when you think of um, healthy grains, you want to think of A, whole grains, and then use a variety of grains as well, right? So there's um, jasmine rice, there's brown rice, um, there's... Um, you know, multi-grain or, or uh, multi-colored rice, right? Like black rice or purple rice. Um, those those uh, types of grains have um, more, they, they keep the integrity of the grain closer to it being whole. When things are uh, refined and they add, um, you know, further like bleaching, like, uh, you know, plain white rice, um, it strips away of the nutritional value. So always look for the whole grain component when you're looking at pastas, when you're looking at breads and rice. Um, there are other grains too that are really delicious for um, and very good for you like farro, like quinoa, um, that are alternative grains that are delicious and nutritious. Um, they're also really cost effective and you, um, they, they, uh, they last you longer, right? So, you know, uh, if you buy, let's say a pound of farro, um, it can, you can make less, right? Because it keeps you fuller longer um, and it lasts you longer. So always keep in mind that, um, you know, whole grains or the raw grain that you cook at home is always cheaper than like the instant um, rice or the instant um, pastas. So proteins, again, you remember to always have about the size of your fist. Remember that your stomach is about the size of two, your two fists together, right? So this is about the size of my stomach, right? So think when you are serving yourself that you want to make the size of your two fists together, right? So this should be the serving and the serving of protein should be about this big, right? About the size of your fist, like the top part of your fist. Healthy um, lean uh, protein is like turkey, chicken, um, seafood, right? As long as you're not allergic to like shellfish, um, salmon, tuna, things of that nature are really, really good for you. And for those folks that are either vegan or vegetarian, um, there are other alternative um, proteins uh, like um, tofu or um, certain uh, beans, which also fall under the grain, but they have a lot of protein in them. Another really great source of protein which is a combination of dairy and protein, um, are, is the Greek yogurt. So Greek yogurt, uh, about, you know, the, the regular cup of Greek yogurt has about the same amount of protein as like a, a piece of chicken cutlet. So um, just think along those lines when you are consuming these things because protein really helps your muscle, um, uh, keep your muscle mass. Um, it keeps you fuller longer, right? Um, and, and it's also as uh, you wanna be mindful of the amount of saturated fats that are in there. Saturated fats are the fats that are unhealthy for you, right? Our bodies create and use um, fats as part of their cell process, but the fats that we consume, um, especially the unhealthy fats, really can cause um, long-term chronic illnesses and or cancers. And if we want to think as, of food as a source of medicine, we wanna be mindful that we are consuming um, lean, healthy protein. So vegetables and fruits, remember that half of your plate should be comprised of fruits and vegetables. Um, and it's not just like one, like one piece of fruit and one piece of fresh vegetable, it is the variety of these fruits and vegetables. You wanna make sure that um, you're shopping for things that are in season. It's always cheaper to go um, purchase things that are in season. So right now it's the fall. So there's um, a lot of pumpkin, uh, squash, corn, 
um, different types of maize. Uh, there's a variety of fall um, veggies that are delicious um, and very good for you, right? Um, sweet potato too is um, super delicious and very healthy for you. Um, but again, you want to mix it up. The variety of um, fresh fruits and vegetables is what gives you the maximum amount of nutritional value. Are there any questions so far? Okay, keep going. So um, sometimes uh, there, like some of the options too, if once you do purchase um, fresh fruits and vegetables. Sometimes we overbuy produce and um, it goes bad and we tend to have to throw it away. Um, before that happens, um, you could be mindful to use, like only purchase what you're gonna use within that period of time. So like plan your grocery shopping, right? And if you do have, um, uh, some vegetables that are starting to turn or some fruit, you could always, um, you know, peel it, uh, prep it and put it in a Ziploc bag in the freezer and like save it for later. So for example, if you buy like squash or if you buy um, a pumpkin, right? And, you know, you only use one piece today and, it, you know, and by like Saturday, you're not, you're not thinking of using it again. Just peel it, cut it up, you know, cube it up and put it in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. And whenever, you know, you want to make a stew or you want to, um, you know, throw it in uh, for a dish, it's always there. It doesn't go bad um, and you're not being wasteful, right? So be mindful of not being wasteful when um, you're purchasing these things. And then to maximize um, the cost savings of it is to actually use it right? Because if you buy something, it goes back and you throw it away. It's literally like taking money and putting it in the garbage, okay? So be mindful of um, using what you buy, right, to incorporate into your dishes. And if it's starting to turn or you're really not ready to use it right then and there, peel it, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in, throw it in the freezer. So when you're thinking about like your grocery shopping, um, I know that you guys are young right now, right? But sooner or later, you'll be off to college, right? Or, you know, living on your own. Um, and even though it's a few years away, you know, it'll get here before you know it. Be mindful of like your spending, right? So you always want to go to the grocery stores and plan your trip, right? You give yourself a budget, and you plan, by planning your meals, you're also going in there with a purpose, right? So if I am going to plan my meals from, you know, Sunday to Saturday, and um, I'm going to make this for dinner this day and have leftovers for lunch the next day, this is how you, A, save money, B, you are using what you buy, right? And also, see most importantly that you are being mindful of the types of nutrients that you're putting into your system right so remember by planning ahead right and like let's say using coupons right there's like um apps now that and circulars that go around that you can like get discounts on you know whatever the store has on sale that week so oh I kind of skipped over dairy. Okay, so dairy, as I said before, is on the side, right? And we really do need dairy in our earlier years. But as we get older, remember that our body's needs change. Um, but dairy, as an, like as you grow older, is really good for your bone health. Um, but it's not a necessary thing. You could also get calcium and potassium and vitamin D from fresh veggies, especially the leafy greens. Right. So when you are um, incorporating the plate method, right, think of the, the variety of different fruits and vegetables and that they all have specific um, health benefits. Right. Um, but you don't want to keep it to one type of fruit and vegetable. You want to mix it up because the variety is what maximizes um, the nutritional value. So keep that in mind, right? So within the category, you wanna make sure that you have leafy greens, um, let's say carrots, peppers, right? And then you get your vitamin E, your vitamin C. You, you, you're mixing up all the different types of nutrients, right, within the same category. And besides, the more you eat 
fresh fruits and vegetables, it fills you up so that the other category with grain and protein stays within um, a portion. Any questions so far? Okay, so um, some budget friendly tips is don't go to the shop, don't do food shopping when you are hungry. It, there has been studies on this, that people that go to the supermarket when they're hungry, they purchase a lot more food that, that, that they absolutely don't need, right? And you're, because you're hungry, everything makes, like you, you wanna buy everything, right? So make sure that you, you go to the food market with a full belly. The second thing is planning your meals, right? If you plan your meals, then you're going there with a purpose. You create a list and always shop for things that are on sale. So if you buy um, fresh produce and um, things that are in season, one, there's a lot of it. So the price is going to be a lot less, right? So you don't buy strawberries, you know, like now you want to buy strawberries in like the spring and summer, right? Because there's, that's the season. Right now, um, the types of fruits that are um, in season are like pears and apples, um, citrus. There's some, certain citruses that are in season now, um, squash, things of that nature. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you purchase things that are in season. Remember to stay in the outside of the, um, the aisles. So once you go into the supermarket, all the fresh stuff, is on the perimeter of the supermarket and the aisles are all, are mostly things um, that are either in boxes or cans, right? They have a longer shelf, uh, shelf life and it's not necessarily bad for you. Um, however, just be mindful of reading the label to ensure um, that you know exactly the nutritional value that you're getting in. And if the um, components and in the ingredients, like you can't pronounce them, then it's probably, you know, probably best to just put it back and um, make it fresh if you can, okay? Um, doesn't mean that you can never eat out of a box or a can, no. Um, there are plenty of things that are good for you that come in cans or, or box goods. Just be mindful of reading the label so you know how much sodium it has, how much sugar it has, how much um, fat, saturated um, fat it has, how many servings come in that one box. If you start getting used to, um, if you get used to these habits now as um, young adults, as you become adults, uh, you, you, it's a something that's already built in and you are much more mindful because right now you're like living at a peak of your health, right, in your youth. But as you get older, again, your body will change and you're, um, you will have different health needs. So we want to make sure that you're um, being mindful of uh, the food that you're putting into your body. So um, buy store brand because it is cheaper. The no frills or the store brand um, section, uh, you can buy like, if you like cornflakes, let's say, right? You can buy the store brand um, no frills cornflakes. It's a lot cheaper because what you're really buying is all the advertising and the pretty you know, packaging, right? That's what you're paying extra for. Um, but if you're buying the same product, right, when the ones that, that says like no frills. So make sure that you buy um, the store brand when you can, okay? Um, good low cost items available all year, right? That include, um, you know, proteins in like beans, can, canned beans like garbanzos, black beans, cannelli beans, red beans, pinto. Um, there's a variety of beans and it has a lot of protein in it. Um, and it has good fiber, like healthy fiber for your gut. So you could definitely use that um, as a source of protein. Anything that comes like in a can, what I would suggest though is to drain them and just rinse it off because um, canned goods, um, especially beans, have like they're immersed in a liquid and that liquid tends to have like a mixture of like salt and um, sugars, sodium and um, fructose that it's tend to preserve the bean or whatever is in that canned good. So um, once you open up the can, drain it right? Rinse it off with cold water, just rinse off the excess liquid from the can, um, and then, you know, prepare it. Um, have plenty of 
fruits and vegetables. Now, if you're not an avid vegetable eater, what I would recommend is to like within your list, you um, put two vegetables that you really love, right? And then two vegetables that you want to try, right? So even if you can't name them, once you're at the grocery store, make sure that you're using all your senses because the body has, is a, has an amazing ability to tell you what it needs. So when you're using your senses like your sight, the smell, um, the texture, right? Um, anything that kind of speaks to you, like if you like the color of um, the leafy green or the romaine lettuce or the arugula, the green and the arugula or um, the dark kale, or if you see a, um, a specific fruit that you like, like passion fruit or pears or kiwi, something that kind of speaks to you that you want to try that's different um, from outside your comfort zone, try one or two of those different fruits and vegetables and then incorporate it slowly into your diet. Any questions so far? So make sure that you're reading um, the cost um, and comparing, right? Um, there are many different products and the way that the labels read are very confusing, but there are two um, things that you wanna look for, right? Is how much is in what you're purchasing, right? And then look at the price and the unit price to let you know how much you're paying for the volume of what's in the container, right? So if, um, for example, if you've ever been to the grocery store and you go by like the dairy section by the yogurt, like they have like the individual packs of yogurt and then they'll have like a really big one that's probably like plain or, you know, those tend to be much more affordable than the individual packaged ones. Um, now, again, if you are looking to have a budget-friendly um, diet and grocery list, you, and, and, and if you're incorporating, um, let's say, yogurt, because we're using that as an example, um, if into your daily diet, you want to purchase like the bigger one. Um, and again, if, if there's a store brand, let's say plain Greek yogurt or vanilla um, Greek yogurt, of the big container, you are getting a lot more for your money than the tiny little ones, unless the individual ones are on sale. Sometimes they have sales like, you know, you get 10 for $3, right? Then you can, you know, mix it up. If it's on sale, right, and it's part of your grocery list, get it. But um, if it's not on sale, you really want to compare the um, unit price to the retail price, right? And how much is in the container. So total price and size equals the unit price. So for example, the six ounce yogurt costs 72 cents, right? 72 cents over six ounces. So you're getting, you're paying 12 cents per ounce, right? So again, no one is gonna sit there and do all this math but when you look at the unit price, right, that's what it's letting you know how much you're paying for the volume in the container. So again, grocery list, make sure that you go to the supermarket with a budget and a plan. So you know exactly what you're getting when you get there. Right. There are going to be certain things that you may want to try or see something that's of interest. Right. But you try to stick to what um, your grocery list that you made up before you went to the grocery store um, in order to ensure that you stay within your budget or allocate a certain, a certain amount of money within your budget for the like unplanned purchases. There are many different resources that you can use, um, and I would always encourage you to use reputable um, websites like myplate.gov, um, Harvard Healthy Plate, the MyPlate on a Budget, or the New Jersey Department of Health. Um, they have tons of resources um, and tons of ways and tricks that um, you can expand your palate um, especially when, when you're incorporating um, healthy fruits and vegetables and grains and proteins to ensure that we're keeping our bodies um, health, healthy um, and well. So I'm going to um, exit out of this and go back to here. 
So everyone um, will get this. I'm going to send this to Maura um, electronically. And Maura, you could share it with the group. Um, but this kind of explains further the different types of grain, protein, vegetables, and fruits, right? And some um, budget-friendly tips that you can share with, you know, your parents or your friends um, to kind of give you a better idea as to how to incorporate healthier options into your everyday diet. And I am going to stop sharing my screen and pause there for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Anybody have any questions? I will definitely share that and I'll probably put some out here in case people do um, take it when we get people in the library. We're open only very limited hours, so yeah not really great for the kids. <laughs> yeah, um, and again, if um, folks need any type of um, list of local food pantry information, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to share that, that information um, with you if you'd like. Uh, if uh, actually you are, um, you, you're not only overseeing this program, you also oversee like me regular memberships that come in and out, I right? Do. Yes. Okay. So what's the um, zip code in like where the library is within it's that? 08840. Let me just um, type that for myself. Okay. Uh, you said zero? 8840. All right, so I'm gonna um, pull that list up for you and send it to you with the um, my plate flyer for okay. folks. That would be great because I do know that there are people that do come in that need assistance with food. Um, even the teens know we actually did a coat drive and a blanket drive because there were, when the library was open, there was um, there's a lot of transient people that come in looking for help because we're located by a train station and by bus stops and on a main road. So we, we tend to get more than you would think. So does anybody have any- Happy to share that information. Yeah. I'd be happy to put it all out there for everybody. New questions? They're always so quiet. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for um, having us tonight. This was fun. Um, I hope you guys learned something and um, I hope that you're able to incorporate it into your day to day. And if you have any questions that you don't want to share with the group, you're also welcome to share with Maura and she can share it with me. Thank you so much, Iris. You're very uh, welcome. Here.